So today we are going to cover Java session 10 exception handling. So why is exception handling needed? And what is the use of exception handling in Java? So there are a lot of unexpected error that can happen at runtime, right? So these are the errors that, that are not caught by the compiler because they don't occur when the program is being compiled, but rather they occur when the program is running, right? If any such error occurs when the program is running, what will happen is it will abruptly stop the program and we don't want that. We don't want the application to abruptly stop or you know sorry we don't want the application to abruptly stop right so when someone some something unexpected occurs we ensure that the program detects the problem and it does something about it right so it does something about it so extensive testing of a special station can result to a spaghetti code so, so spaghetti code is something you look at later don't worry about it right so we need to check the we need to have mechanism to check for this problem wherever it occurs right so we need to have some kind of conditions to detect errors that occur at runtime but are not they are not caught by the compiler but do occur at the runtime right so we need to we need to understand why do we need such a thing in java right so what are the different errors that can occur at runtime right so let's say as an example in java <coughs> If we are, we are taking two numbers and we are performing some operation on it, we are taking two integers and we are performing some operation on it. So now, what is what is the possibility? Is the possibility that while we are dividing two numbers, right, the dividend might be zero, right? In that case, the program will run normally. But what if the divisor is zero, right? What if the divisor is zero. What happens then? So if you are dividing something by zero, then this is not defined, and this will be a, and this is an error. But because we are doing, we are storing the values in the variable a divided by b, till the program runs, we will have no idea what are the values of a and b right only at runtime what is runtime when jr is executing the program when the jvm is executing the program only then we'll know <coughs> what is the issue what is the issue for, for this problem right so so we need to handle such situations also you know in the programs that we write right so let's take a brief overview right and let's understand what all is involved in java's exception handling what are the small small parts in it and how and finally how does the bigger picture look like right <coughs> so exception basically indicates in a problem during a program right a problem during the execution so what is exception Exception is nothing but a problem during the execution of a program. So what are the uses of exception handling? We process exception from program components. What all exceptions that are coming, we process them and we understand what is what and where is the program going wrong. <coughs> when we are building large projects, there might be a lot of exceptions and we have to handle them in a uniform manner. Right, all the exceptions across all the thing should be in a standard format, and then finally removing error handling code from the main line. Right, so a method in Java can also detect an error and it can throw an exception. Right, it can throw an exception. It is the duty of the exception handler to process the error. Right, and if we don't catch the exception, what will happen? If you don't catch the exception, what will happen? 
the program might get terminated and which is never wanted so imagine yeah. imagine your you use facebook everybody here uses facebook <coughs> right so now while we are using facebook there's an error on the facebook background and the facebook goes down right facebook never goes down right because they have implemented exception handling pretty well they have taken care of all the exceptions and errors in the program so so what do we do is codes that generate the error we put them in the try block we say hey there is a possibility of runtime error happening between these lines right so let's put it in the try block <coughs> the part which handles the error actually is mentioned in the catch block and then we have the finally clause the finally clause always always executes right irrespective of there is an error it will still execute if there is no error even then it will execute right and throw clause specifies exception method throws throws clause is used for the exception thrown by the methods or the classes also exception handler now exceptions are thrown here and they are handled here an exception handler right what does this mean basically so an exception happened and it was thrown to the it was thrown to the so let's say this is our try block this is the try block this is the catch block and this is the second catch block now when an exception is thrown from here it goes on to the second catch block first catch block if it is matches here then we process the error here itself if it does not match the exception handler here we'll look at all the examples we'll do the example just a little patience right it does not match it's just like if and else if <coughs> right it's just like else and if and else if if it matches the first one it will not match it with the second one if it does not match with the second one then the program will abruptly stop right throws an exception and matches it against the first exception handler if it matches then it processes the error else it passes it to the second exception handler if that also does not match then the program is abandoned abruptly <coughs> so what are the different terminologies associated with exception handling in java right let's look at them so throw an exception what does the throw an exception mean an exception that has occurred right have been thrown thrown that means we throw a java we java we throw an exception right we throw an exception is an exception that is occurred at run time that is occurred at run time right what is a stack trace so basically a stack trace tells you everything it tells you everything it gives you a message it tells you the type of exception where is example was it a divide by zero error <coughs> or was it an array index out of bound exception it gives you an detailed analysis not only this it also tells you <coughs> which line in your program in which class was this exception has this exception occurred it pinpoints which class in which class has this exception occurred right and then arithmetic exceptions which can occur out of a different number of problems in arithmetic operations that we perform can occur out of a different number of problems occur in arithmetic so let's do a quick example and before we continue so we declare a class 
exception example we write the main vector let's we have two variables right now now when i run this Okay, let's see. All right, so let's see. Java C exception example dot Java. Now see, compiler does not catch this error. What is the error here? When we are doing C is equal to B divided by A. When we say C is equal to B divided by A. What we are doing is we are dividing a number by zero, right? So when I run this program now, what will it say? It says exceptions in thread main Java. What is the exception? Arithmetic exception. What is it? This is the major type. And what is the actual exception? Divide by zero, right? Divide by zero. At exception example dot main line number six. Okay, let's look at it. Line number. This is the class. This is the class. This is the line number. Here is the exception. You're dividing a number by zero. Now what do we do? Okay, let's try another thing. Now I want to. Display the output. Will this be executed? Will this be executed? No, there is no print statement. So as soon as the program sees the exception here, as soon as the exception is thrown here the program stops the execution it stops the execution when there is an exception here as soon as the program sees an exception here it stops executing the program right are there any doubts is it clear till now I'll pause here for two minutes. Already late. So I'll pause here for two minutes. Just think about it and let me know if there are any doubts.
okay let's continue then okay so now what did we see this line is not executed now what can we do to correct this what we say is okay I know there is a possibility of an exception handle happening here what kind of an exception what is the type of exception that can happen here arithmetic exception I say arithmetic exception arithmetic this is the exception that can happen here arithmetic exception right we even if we don't this will work but we should import this class right now let's see what happens we say catch and do nothing catch and just print exception caught now the question is C was declared inside this scope try now so will it be available here will it be available there let's just try without catch small see now it says cannot find symbol c why because c was declared between these scopes right so what we need to do is c and do it like this so now what is the default value of integer Java exception right exception caught we try to divide the number C tell you the number C by dividing B by A what happens it says exception caught exception caught right exception caught and it prints we can also print the complete exception by simply saying e dot to string this will print the complete exception as well exception caught java language arithmetic exception divided by zero what was the exception arithmetic exception divided by zero right so whenever an exception occurs whenever an exception occurs what does the compiler do what does the jvm do if there is a try and catch block it tries to catch it in this it tries to catch it in this is this clear are there any doubts please ask Okay, let's continue then we have seen how do we use the try block and how does try and catch block alter this the program flow right <coughs> so how do we take care of the runtime exceptions in java 
right. Now, what else do we know? Mm. So, let's continue. So, now these are terminology. So, this is the throne exception. This is the throne exception. And this is not the complete but a part of the track trace. Right. So let's try printing E. What does it do? This should give the complete track trace. Oh, it does not. Right? It does not. But the track trace is something that we saw earlier. Complete pinpoint location of the line at which the error occurred. Now, throw point. What is the throw point? <laughs> initial point at which the exception occurs, right? Top row of the call chain. For in this example, where did the exception occur? This. What do we call it? Call it throw point. What is the throw point of the exception in this case? It is here. When we try to divide the number by zero, the exception occurs here. Let's forget about the scanner class for now. So what happens when an exception occurs? When an exception occurs, the try block immediately stops executing. It immediately stops executing. Right? Whatever we have inside the try block, it immediately stops executing. Is this clear? Is this part clear? As soon as the exception occurs, the try block stops execution. So Let's look at it here. Let's say I have I have a lot of numbers here. And I'm printing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I have another statement here. Right? Some some number, garbage numbers. Right now, this is the point where the actual error occurs. This is the point where the actual error occurs. Right now, what we are saying is this will execute as soon as the error occurs, it will stop the execution and directly go to the catch block. It will directly go to the catch block. Let's compile, let's run it. See before calculating C. Before calculating C, this part executed, then this part executed, there was an error. So Java skipped these two print statements. It did not execute these two print statements. So what happens in case of an error? The try block immediately terminates. The try block immediately terminates. Right? So as soon as the exception occurs, the try block stops the execution. It's 3 o'clock. What does the try block do? It stops the execution of the program there at the point at which the error occurred. Right? At the very point at which the error occurred. Let's continue. Okay, did we cover everything here? Okay. <laughs> Finally, block is optional. It may be there or it may not be there. It doesn't matter. But if you have a try, then you need to have at least one catch. If you are using a try block, then you need to have at least one catch clause. Right? With every try block, you need to have at least one catch clause. Right? So program control will not return the throw point. 
so try block has expired the flow control of the program statement after the last catch block right so what it's saying is after the last catch block the flow control that's it the program continues in normal execution program will continue in normal execution right as soon as the try block ends it will try and match the exception with the, all the catch clauses the first that matches is selected and the program continues execution after the last catch clause <coughs> all right we have done this okay So try block basically encloses code that might throw an exception that you've seen us seen, and that code that should not execute if an exception occurs. So try block executes the part of the code where an exception occurs, and also the code that should not execute in case of an exception. What is the example here? So like I want to calculate C, then I wanted to update b again so i would just say b is equal to c plus <coughs> b right now the value of c is not defined the value of c is not defined right so that i don't want this part to execute if there is an error while dividing c b by a so i don't want to execute this if there is an error while dividing b by a so i keep it inside the try clause or try block also right i keep this inside the try block also right so what all goes in the try block try block throw point what is throw point the point where there is a possibility of an exception and also the statements that should not execute in case of an exception right so again is this part clear what all goes into a try block is this part clear please please take a look at it and let me know if you have any doubts so what happens after the throw clause after what is the throws clause for right but before we start using the throws clause let's let's look at another example of the program so let's say we have a class called exception 
example two. Right, we have a variable called a, b, a is equal to 10, b is equal to 0, right. We also have an char array, we also have an character array, right now <coughs> now let's try doing this now what happens if i try printing forget the try block now what happens if i try printing what is the length of this array 1 1 2 3 4 5 Index starts from 0. So the possible indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The possible indices are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now let's try printing this. Let's try printing this array. So what if I say value at index? So let's say I made a mistake in counting. I thought they were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is also a 6th index also. There is a 6th index also. I made a mistake in counting. There is a 6th index also. I say a of 6. What are the possible indexes? 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right? But I said I want the value at 6th index. Now what will happen here? Right now, let's see what happens here when we run this. It says, Right, I think, but when I run it, what will happen? It says Java language array index out of bound exceptions. Array index out of bound exception. Why? Because my for my array array C character array C, the val valid indexes were only the valid indexes were only till 0, 1. 2, 3, and 4. The valid indices were only till 4. Right? So, it says array index out of bound exception. What does it say? Array index out of bound exception. So, how do we correct this behavior? What is our throw point for this? What is our throw point for this? Okay, catch array index out of bounds exception E array just print array exception cot array exception cot right 
ऐसे सिस्टम डॉट आउट डॉट पेरेंटल एन एग्जीक्यूट द रिमेनिंग प्रोग्राम राइट एग्जीक्यूट द रिमेनिंग प्रोग्राम वट हैपन्स इट कैच इज द एक्सेप्शन हेयर इट एग्जीक्यूट द स्टेटमेंट इन साइड द कैच ब्लॉक and then it continues executing the remaining program and it continues executing the remaining program right <coughs> so now let's say we have a possibility of an other error happening we have a possibility of an other error happening what is that error so let's let's make sure that error happens before so we say system dot out dot print ln divide a by b is equal to a divided by b so what is the error that will happen in this it will be arithmetic exception so we'll have multiple catch blocks now we'll say divide by zero exception got divide by exception zero got right what does it say <coughs> divide by zero exception caught so let's run it mm, unexpected type okay sorry i missed a plus mm -hmm. second error oh variable a is already defined right let's execute this now so now what happens the error occurs the throw point is this now the throw point is this right so what happens after this now the throw point is this what happens after this as soon as the throw point is reached the try block what is the try block from here to here try block execution stops right JVM tries to match the errors with catch clause, right? JVM tries to match the errors with the catch clause. If the errors are matched, that catch clause is executed, and the remaining flow of the program continues as normal. The remaining flow of the program continues as normal. Otherwise. otherwise what do we do otherwise what do we do so no no not the program is stopped if it is not caught then the program is stopped right if not caught then the program is stopped right okay is there any doubts please ask
कंटिन्यू नाउ एक्सेप्शन कैन बी थ्रोन बाय मेथड बॉडी ऑल्सो राइट सो बाई स्टेटमेंट मेथड बॉडी एक्सेप्शन कैन बी टाइप और लिस्टेड एज अ क्लॉज और सब क्लॉज राइट सो लेट लुक एट दिस एग्जाम्पल लाइक अगेन let's let's look at directly this now we can actually throw the exception to a different class as well right so what happens is whenever this this exception is thrown by somebody it is the responsibility of the particular code that is calling that method or or wherever is the responsible the lowest point is responsible for taking care of that exception the lowest point is responsible right so let's let's look at this example okay what does it what is it saying let's look at it here so now i can also say throw ex throw ex what will happen the program execution will stop here if i say throw ex the first thing is program execution will stop here right program execution will stop here so what happens it says java language arithmetic exception divided by 0 right please take care of it right it says please take care of this exception okay so what if we don't have this what if we have one here now we can divide it with one right so now what is the second exception array index out of bounds right now the exception is array index out of bounds right so what happens what happens it prints now we are not throwing any exception here we are not throwing any exception here right because we are not throwing any exception the program flow continues as normal the program flow continues as normal right right because we are not throwing any exception here we only have a print statement it continues with the normal flow after the last catch block after the last catch block so if from inside the catch block or anywhere if i say throw an exception that part will be stopped Pro not right that particular block will be stopped right that's very important to understand now let's look at a different example a different one altogether right so let's let's have this okay public class public class exception now let's first make an object of this exam class right let's first make an example of this class object of this class right now let's come and declare a method let's force this method to throw an exception right what do we say we say we have two numbers right we have two numbers right 
और वी कैन वाई डू यू वॉन्ट टू डिवाइड एन एक्चुअली डू ऑपरेशन वी सिंपली से थ्रो न्यू अर्थ मेटेक एक्सेप्शन आई कैन डायरेक्टली क्रिएटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट एंड से प्लीज थ्रो ए न्यू अरिथमेटिक एक्सेप्शन इज दिस ओके विल दिस कंपाइल टू सेव दिस Okay. Now, let's say I call this method here. I call this method here. So, what is this method doing? It is saying there will be an exception. Now, what happens? Now, the program will stop execution. This program will stop execution. It says arithmetic exception. Where throw exception Java eleven throw exception Java line number eleven and also in the main method here, right? So it gives the complete hierarchy where the first instead of the error occurred, then where it was sent to and everything. Now there is a throw. When there is a throw, the execution stops for from the program. This method is not caught, right? So what can I do? i can simply say okay i know there will be an error there can be an error here i'll put it in a try catch blocks catch arithmetic exception ex that's it right now what happens the exception was thrown here and it was caught so instead of doing this we can also do this we can have a variable a is equal to 0 b is equal to 10 i say c is equal to a b divided by a b divided by a we say b divided by a right it says again says why is it saying because i am catching it here right so i can also say throws arithmetic exception say it throws arithmetic exception now okay i did not declare it as c right error was thrown error was thrown what is the output error was thrown right error was thrown got it